Hi, I'm Brian Webster, and they call me Brian the Nunker Guy. I was in a Cessna 150 on August 27th, 1977 as a passenger. The individual at the controls was a bit of a risk taker, coming down low, just having a great time, but the sun was setting and we were heading west. And they had just put up 16 brand new power lines that hadn't even been marked yet. So we found them and he tried to go over them, but there wasn't a hope. And that second took too long. By the time we rounded out, we were clipping them. And then he hit literally, screaming in full power, flat. It did one big flip on his back and we were both knocked unconscious. But I came to as the water was going up my nose. So the airplane's sinking inverted. Bailed out my door, came around and got the pilot out his, and then literally the airplane sunk. And the one thing I really learned from that accident is the shoulder harnesses save lives. There's no question of it. We exceeded somewhere in the air of 20 G-force on your upper body. And with that being said, there is no question your head would have made contact with the dashboard. And if you're knocked out cold, nobody can help you underwater. What Brian learned from surviving that life-threatening situation stayed with him throughout his 25-year commercial aviation career. While looking for an aircraft egress training course in the mid-90s, he discovered that outside the military, none existed for pilots. So he recognized the need and developed one himself. Our course is relevant for everybody who flies anything. It doesn't matter if it's a helicopter, a wheel plane, or a float plane. And I've got many pictures of float planes and wheel planes, both upside down in the water. Basically, the 35 years I've been flying, it's a common occurrence, unfortunately, and people aren't prepared for it. If you go underwater, what will happen is you have a very limited time before you run into problems, and uh, one of them, of course, being disorientation. And once we're underwater, we have a very short period of time to solve the problem, and nobody will be there to help you. What we've designed is a one-day program. It takes three hours in the classroom and we discuss everything that we're gonna do in the pool and what to avoid. And in the pool, we have plastic equipment that we've designed over a period of years, so it's very effective. And basically, we put people in a situation similar to if they were to end up in the water. And it doesn't matter how you end up upside down. When you're upside down, disorientation and panic set in very rapidly. And if you haven't thought it out or been shown what to do, it ends up in just about the same context every single time. Within about 30 seconds, people have gone completely into chaos state. It's more confusing than you would think it'd be. I mean, even though you're, you think you're ready for it, as soon as you get turned upside down, you really don't have any idea where, which way is up. What we start out with is just simple life vests that are on board every float plane, every wheel plane that goes over water. We teach you how to use them, how to inflate them, what to think about, what to buy, what products are, are very useful if you're going up to the north, for example. Then uh, we put you into the pool. We teach you how to get in and out of life rafts, help people in and out of life rafts, because uh, a lot of folks have them. Search and rescue can drop life rafts, but they don't give you information on what to do with them. And then we put you through Cessna windows, and all Cessna windows, every one of them are the very same size, from 140 all the way up to until they're pressurized in the caravans. Uh, then from there we put you in a single seat, what we call a dunker module, and it has a door on it. We flip you upside down, see so you react to that. And then we have this, the likeness of a Cessna or a Belt helicopter, six seats sitting there. And again, you just practice doing things in the water that you wouldn't normally, which is kicking out windows and uh, basically using your imagination instead of your eyesight. But the big thing is to know where the handles are, how they work, and exactly what you would do if you were upside down and couldn't find yourself. In other words, we get people to find references, feel around the airplane, what has a distinct shape, and then once you've found one thing, it'll lead you to the next and to the next. So if you've got the throttle, then you know where the control yoke is and you know you're in the front of the airplane. Underwater, it's completely different from what people ever expect. One, two, three, four, out the door. And it's not speed, it's methodical thought. Okay, so go through that. One, open the door. Two, reference point. Three, two belts. Work up your best. Now they're going slowly, don't hurry, go for it. See what happens? You get stuck. You're going to learn to sweep that off your shoulder. What we try to get people to do is to give it a lot of thought. Don't just jump in your airplane and hit the starter and go. First off, you might be in a low wing, meaning if you invert in the water, when you come out the door, you're going to hit your head on the wing because it's going to be above you. On the high-winged airplanes, when you flipped upside down in the water, you can get out, the wing's not in the way, the doors do jam. So we teach you if a door fails, then you go for a window. You'll get some that are very bold and they need to be uh, somewhat challenged and that's not a problem. We get some that are extremely high anxiety because they just don't like water or confinement. And again, we put them through until they get it. But the fact remains, if they've been trained and this ever happened, they're far better off. 
Um, the stats show this without a doubt, but in our years of service that we've been in business, we've now been attributed to saving 14 lives, which I think is quite impressive, as most recently as three weeks ago. And what I learned today was that you have to think of the sequence of, a, of what you're going to do in order to exit the plane and you keep yourself focused on those four things and then you tend not to panic. Uh, what I took from today was the fact that everything is safety first, prevention first. This is a last resort and the last resort if you are prepared and your motor skills are familiar with doing the exercise then you're more likely to have a chance of survival. Yeah. It was just a great day all about uh, the whole safety issue in the pool here about being calm in a, in a very difficult situation when you're disoriented. Well done. Being upside down, disoriented water is a new experience. Unless you experience it, no one can tell you what it's like.